Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Python series. So today we will begin with the functions. So yes, today is our lecture number nine. So let me open my Jupyter notebook. Meanwhile, you also open your Jupyter notebook side by side. Today we will going to see the functions in Python. How uh, we can code with the help of functions. So yeah. In lecture number nine, I will be creating my new Python notebook. I will be naming it as functions. So today we will be dealing with the functions. We will be seeing what are the functions. So as we know in Python, what we were doing, we were doing. So suppose I want to print any line. So I use I I were using the print. I were using the print function. So suppose this is my this is my print. And in this, I was printing. Okay, we were creating a list. As you know, we were creating the list in some this fashion. And after running it, we were suppose I want to print it. We are printing in this manner, or using print l. You can see. If you want to check its length, just simply we are checking its length. Okay, these are the simple functionality. These are the inbuilt functions. Okay. But today we are going to see the user-defined functions. How we can define our own functions in the Python? Okay. Suppose this is a keyword. Okay. Let me zoom for you. So you see, this is a keyword def. Okay. Remember one thing. Whenever you are declaring a function in the Python, def keyword is used. Suppose my function name is test. So after writing a def keyword, write your functions function name. So my function name is test. And these two parentheses and and uh, giving colon. After that, when you hit enter, you can see automatically four spaces are given. A tab is given, so it is called as an indentation. Okay. Suppose I am just writing a pass. Pass means you are not writing anything. You are just writing a pass means it will be going to execute your test function. Okay. It will be going to execute your test function, but nothing is written. If you are not writing anything in the function, just pass the keyword. Just write a pass. Just write a pass. You can see our function is work properly. We didn't get any error. Okay, remember. So let me write a new function for you. Uh, let me def test one. In this, I will be writing print. This is my very very first function. Okay, just writing in a simple manner. You can see I have written in front of you. A simple print statement in the in the function. Suppose I want to print this statement. Suppose I want to print this statement. I want to call this statement again and again. Instead of writing print again and again, I will just call my function. So this is the function calling. You can see I have written test one and this parenthesis. Just a way of calling a function. So I got a, this is my very very first function. In front of you, I got a result as you can see. Okay. Suppose I am doing. I'm doing concatenation using the plus sign. You can say I got an error. We cannot perform this thing. Okay, in the function you can see I got an error. Unsupported operand type for plus non type and str. Okay, you cannot do such type of operation just for an experiment I have done in front of you. So let's move ahead. Suppose I have written def test two. In this I will be writing in front of you return. What do you mean by return? So I'm writing the same thing again. This is my, this is my very first return. Just uh, writing a simple line, so it will be clearly understand to you all. You can say I've written just a return. This is my very first return. So if you want to run this, just call your function. You will get the output itself. Okay. Either you can go with a print or you can go with a return. Both are suitable. Okay. So you can see in front of you, but but see now a difference. What will be the difference between the print as well as return? In return, what the thing is happening? Whenever, whenever you do this type of thing in the return, in the return again repeating when you are returning something, if you are adding concat concatenating with the function. In the case of a print, we didn't get any output. We didn't get any output. We got an error. We got an error. You can see in the above code. But in the case of return, 
we got the result suppose i given a space so you can say my uh, my name it is concatenated so what is the use of a return statement you can see a very simple question in front of you okay remember this uh, thing when you're dealing with a print as well as return what is the major difference and what the things are happening when you're using the print in the function as well as written in the function so see what the thing i am doing now here def so for better understanding let me write in this way suppose i am writing return uh yes my name uh, 23 uh, passing a numbers float integers and some list in front of you you can see i have passes sorry yeah so when i run it and when i call my test you can see i got a result i got a result in the form of a tuple when you're returning you got a tuple you can see what the result we got okay remember this thing when you are writing and returning a lot many things by separating the comma you got the functions you got the output you got the output in the tuple you can see in the front of you whatever things you have written it is in the in the round brackets in the round bracket suppose what can i do for you, you can see uh, one two three four values are there okay four things it is returning so i can do one thing here in front of it let me write a b c d and in that i will be writing a test three so now see what the thing is happening when i uh, print i want to to check what did the value in a store you can see my name yes if you write b you will get getting a 23 if you're writing a c you'll be getting 354.27 if you're writing a d you will be getting that list what you pass so in this way this is a way of accessing if you want to access a particular thing if it is not mentioned you can go with this way a very simple and easy way okay so this is a very simple thing you should know about the functions so I'm yeah, moving ahead. Suppose, suppose, consider. Let me move down. So a is equal to one, b is equal to four. Okay. So let me write my new function for you, test four. Naming as a test four. In this, I will be doing a simple operation in front of you. Okay. And I'm returning a. I'm returning a. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. After running it, let me call my test four. You can see I got an output. I got an output. Okay. So this was a simple example in front of you. What the thing it is doing? Please let me know what the thing it is doing. As we have learned, as we have learned, what the thing is first happening. We know the bottom mass rule. We know the bottom mass rule. What the thing is actually happening here? If you are able to know it, please know me in the comment section. Okay. How the proper mathematical operations are performed in this course. So yeah, you can do this with one more way. What is another way? You can pass arguments or the parameters in the function itself in the parenthesis. Suppose a, b, c in this manner, and you can simply write d is equal to a plus b divided by c, and return and return d. Okay. Let me execute it. You can see I didn't got any error, means it is the correct way. And in front of you, in front of you, I'm writing something. You can see test five. Yeah, I don't pass this anything. You can see there are no any arguments, no any parameters. You can see we got an error. That error is test five missing three required position that is A, B, and C. So in this case, as we have given a parameters here, so you need to you need to pass. You need to pass some values in it. Suppose I'm passing some value and you can see the output. Whatever values are passed, it has performed that operation and the value is stored in the D and we have written the D. Very simple example which illustrate how the arguments or the parameters are passed in the functions. Okay. So yeah, let's see more examples. Suppose I'm writing def test uh, test number. What are the test number? Okay, six. So see A B. I need to perform a simple addition. So I will be writing this a plus b and in test 6 I will call it and I will be passing two numbers. You can see I got the result successfully that the addition of two numbers 7 plus 8 we get the result 15. A very simple and easy operation. Suppose I have I done here in front of you test 
six and I'm passing to string here. So you can get I got a result. I got a result. Okay, you can check here because we are not given any type of it. What is the type of it? And have it has successfully concatenated as we have done the return. You can see a plus b, a plus b. We didn't mention what is the type of a, what is the type of b. Simply we are taking the arguments and on that argument, on that basis, we are performing the operation in the function and we are getting the result. Okay. So you can do in this way as well. Suppose test this. You can pass two list in it. Check. Do some experiments. So you can see the output itself, what the output we got, okay? In this manner, you will be learning more betterly how we can do and perform more operations in the function itself, how we can deal with the parameters as well as you can call these arguments. So now see, I'm taking one list in front of you, taking some random numbers, some name as well as, I will take one list as well. So it will be covering the all aspects. I need to demonstrate in front of you a simple operation. See now, I have created an empty list L1, name as L1. Okay. What the thing I am doing? I am doing a simple thing. You can see for R E L, for R E L, I want to check, I want to print, I want to print only the thing, only the thing which are integer or which are numeric, which are numeric. So what will be the condition for it? The condition will be the type type of i. The type of i should be int or the type of i. What is your i? What is your i? It will be iterating into the real list. It will be iterating in your list. So i will be changing or varying as per the position will be going to increase. Okay. Zeroth position, first position, second position. It will be checking for all the elements. Int as well as float. So if this is if this thing is there, if there is an integer as well as a float in my in my list, I will be doing a simple operation that is l1 dot append l1 dot append i. So the elements will be going to append in my l1 list. The elements will be append to my l1 list. So if I run it and let me print my l1, you can see I got a I got a numeric value only. There is no uh, my name. You can see Yash is not there, Python is not there, and list is as well as list is not there because the type of this is a list. Remember, okay? This is a list. This is not an int or a float. This is a list. Remember this. When you are going to check it, set, you will be getting a list. So yeah. Now see. Now see what the thing we are doing now here. Suppose. Let me let me do one thing for you here. Uh, let me write it, this thing in a function, okay? So see, def test seven, and I will be passing a list as an argument or as a parameter, okay? I will be passing a list. Same thing, I will be performing. What will be first create an empty list, okay? First create an empty list. After that, use your for loop and iterate over the list. After iterating over the list, if type of i equal equal to int or i of i equal equal to float okay remember this thing so what the thing we are doing we are appending it to our l1 list that is where i will be the element and we are returning and we are returning l1 so please check the indentation please follow the indentation many students get error here itself if you're not following the indentation you might get an error okay please follow the particular thing properly if you are returning l1 return l1 here itself here itself it will be printing it will be printing again and again we need a final output we need a final output okay now let me check my test function and let me pass list in it okay your name it as well. You can see the same output we will be getting. This is the use of a function. So here we can see here you can see we are passing L. Okay. And for this particular code, we need to write again and again. But when you are creating a function, just you need to write the name of function and in the argue as a part of the argument, you need to uh, pass that particular list in it. Okay. The function makes our tasks easier. Okay. Remember one thing. 
okay so you can see this is our original list so let me write one more function for it and in this function what we will be doing we will be suppose a is my list okay any list a is my list and this is my empty list and what the thing i am doing here now here so for i in a for i in a if my list type is if my list element type is of list type okay so i will be doing i will be doing i will be first iterating in it i will be first first iterating if there is any list uh, if type i equal equal to list go to that list and for that particular list iterate in it after iterating in it you can see i have first used i then after that i will use j because i is already used okay so let me write l1 dot append <coughs> j sorry l dot append j so whatever the elements will be in the list of type list so it will be going to append into my l you can see in the above list we have one two three four five six so this particular thing will be going to print it okay and in s part i will be writing the thing that is if same thing what we have written above if type of i is equal equal to int or type of i is equal equal to float l dot l dot append i and simply i will be at the end my task will be written written what is your return i will be returning my list that will be my new list empty list will be getting appended so i will be returning it so you can say i have created my function let me pass my list to it test it l so you can see we got an output we got an output what is the output basically we got so first thing it will be iterating over here and for five first five uh, first five position you will be getting first five position are of type int so first five things will be printing first one two three four five you can see one two three four five after that there is my name it will be not doing it will not printing it because we are not passing condition for it as well as for python after that it will check there is a list so if there is a list iterate over it we are iterating over it and by one by one element we are appending to the l that is our new list you can see a very simple example in front of you demonstrating the all the concepts in a proper and easiest manner okay so here we have done and we have learned about the functions so let me take an example of a string it will be giving you more idea so this is my uh, test line function in this um, so what can we do more such operations so see now here here we will be doing here we will be doing so this is my function remember this is my function sorry this is my function to extract to extract num data from list okay so here we will be extracting the num data from the list again i am writing the same thing uh, so it will be getting you more giving you more clarity same thing what i have written above i am i'm again writing the same thing okay it will be giving you more idea what the things we have done earlier same way first iterate over the list iterate over the list if if your list type is sorry if your list type is if your list type have one more list in it so what's the thing you will be doing what the thing will be doing you will be iterating again why i'm explaining this example again so it will be giving you more clarity so see l1 dot append l1 dot append j we were appending the j again we were doing the same task the task we were doing we will be checking out the integer numbers so for integer we why we are using or for or we know the uh, what is the or is doing in or what the thing is happening if either one condition is true it will be working on it it will be printing it if the if i am using add so both the conditions will be true okay remember why we using or instead of a and 
so let me do again i am writing the same thing what i have written above okay as an revision for you to see uh, in the speed in the speed i have written the same function let me write test 9 let me pass it again you can see the same output i have got just for the practice purpose i have written this again so you if you gone through it properly you will be getting a more idea and the clarity okay so now see there is a, there are more lot of many things in the function as we have seen a very simple thing in the function if you write the function in the easiest manner in the easiest manner this is a very easiest manner as we pass the parameter we simply do what return a plus <coughs> b and if we go for test 10 and if we pass some two numbers we will be getting the output as a 10 so this thing we understood we understood this type of things but there is a concept what is the concept so we have a concept and the concept is your def test 11 i am writing something please focus here args now what is this args what is this args so let me return an args okay i will be going through it what is this you can see my code has successfully run if i want to check its type i want to check the type of test 11 you can see i will be getting a tuple i will be getting a tuple why tuple suppose suppose i am writing here test 11 and i am part passing some numbers you can see i am passing some number i got that particular number you can see i have passed number according to me according to me i have passed some anything in it because the argument i use star args what is this star ga so see what is this thing what the thing it is doing so see very simple thing a very important thing it is a pass of variable number of arguments to what the thing is happening the special syntax asterisk args in function definition in python you used to pass a variable number of arguments to a function you can pass as many arguments you can pass okay it depends on you either you can pass 1 2 3 4 okay it is used to pass a non key word that variable length argument list the particular syntax you can see symbol that star it is to take a variable to take in a variable number of arguments means you can uh, write as many arguments you can and it is often it is often used within the word args so we have to write star args okay so see so see what the things it is not compulsory to write a uh, same thing where is my uh, okay you can write here star uh, whatever you write args it depends on you write args you can write whatever thing you want star now so let me go through it so it will be understanding you more better way See, I have written test eleven, and I'm passing here. See, you can pass anything, whatever you want. Oh yeah. Okay. Suppose I can pass list in it. If I run it, you can see I got a particular result of in a type uh, in a tuple. You can say we have checked this type. It is a tuple. Suppose. Instead of uh, writing args again and again, star args, you can write here uh, anything you can uh, write. Suppose, for example, I am creating a new function test where I am will be writing star yes. Okay, no problem. It will be working. It will be working. See now how it will be working. If you don't delay on me, let's see. Return yes. You can see I, uh, my code uh, has done successfully. There, I did not got any error as well. Okay, I have written a simple line in front of you. I got a particular thing properly printed. Is there any issue in it? You can see there is not any issue in it. So suppose uh, I write the same thing again in front of you. Suppose I am passing something like numbers in it. You can see after running, I will be getting an output. Okay, either you can uh, miss standard way of writing args. Args that is your arguments. You can write whatever name you want to give. You can give. Okay, no worries for that. So see now let's move ahead. So there are lot many concept in this as well. Suppose I am writing def star args and comma a, and what I am returning, I am returning um, args and a. Let me turn it. Okay, I got an. Okay, I have not given my function name. Sorry for that. So much sorry. So see. This is my function name. Okay, my code has run successfully. You can see I have given star args as well as a. So now what is basically your a? What is basically your a? So see what the things we are doing earlier. We just we are writing the star args as we can see when we are writing star args. We can pass as many uh, arguments or para uh, as well as a value whatever 
numbers you can give with the help of star we can pass as many uh, parameters in it but if you want a particular value in it if you want a particular variable value in it so see this 13 i have written something so you can say i have passed lot many numbers in front of you if i run it i will get an error what is the error missing one required keyword only argument a it means that it is work for this particular thing but you have written a so for this purpose for this purpose if you are passing any more thing with it you need to specify the value of that variable okay so see if i do if i go in this way you can see i got a particular result in a proper manner and it is separated by a comma as well as a tuple very simple experiment as well as a introduction which introduces you with the concept of how we can use the arguments how we are passing the arguments if are there multiple arguments and if there are arguments we will need to take from the user as well as as well as if there are specified value we can go with this we can go with this way so let me go through the google as well so you can see why do we use star in python it is used to pass a variable number of arguments variable number of arguments to a function it is mostly used to pass a non-key argument okay so if you want to go in more detail let me open and go through this uh, website you can see what the thing is it written the syntax is oh, sorry the special syntax star arcs asterisk arc in function in function definition in python is used is used to pass the variable number of arguments to a function it is used to pass non keyworded variable and argument list okay now again let me move here to my code you can see now you can see now let me create a function mm, let me create a function uh, def test 14 in this i'm writing suppose a b d equal to 23 and b equal to 1 and just passing a very simple and easy thing you can see and if i am returning a b c d if i am returning this a comma b comma c comma d okay just write to return a very simple function and if i check for test 14 you can see just writing this thing it will be showing that missing two required positional arguments a and b okay why this is showing this type of thing you can see we have started with a b d so it is showing a and for b a b c d it is showing that we have not uh, given this particular uh, positional argument to it so what can we do here what can we do here how can we deal with it with? how can we deal with it? so see let me write test 14 and i will be just uh, writing a very simple thing in front of you so let me write you can say we have got a as well as b a as well as b two missing arguments so let me write here five seven so you can see what the thing is happened here so for a and b we got a value five seven but uh, first it was a 23 okay and for c already it was given as a one and for d we got a 23 so remember this concept exactly what the thing is happened here what this the main purpose of it what the thing is happening here so if i are writing a test 14 in that i will be writing passing two things suppose and if i want to change a particular value if i want to check a change you want to change a particular suppose of a d i will be writing in this way suppose any number you can see i will be getting a result okay so it depends on a person to person on how you are using the function or what purpose you are using there is also one thing that is your see. Now what is this thing? A W A R G S. A W A R G S. What is this thing? Let me return. Okay, it is executed successfully, but what is this thing? What is this thing? You can see I got its object. Now you can see I got a I got an empty what is this what I got an empty is it a set or a dictionary let me check its type let me clarify to you if I want to check its type we got a dict 
we got a dictionary we got a dictionary okay so why we use kwargs what is this what is this let me take to take you through this so the special syntax star star kwrs in function definition in python used to pass a keyworded variable length in above things above example above args you can see what we have written not keyworded non keyworded here you can see keyworded variable length arguments so we use the name kwargs with the double star the reason is that the double star allows us to pass through keyword arguments at any number of time very simple thing very very easy thing so now see here with example i will be explaining you suppose i am writing a test 15 in that i am passing a as 1 2 3 4 so you we will be getting a result in the form of dictionary so see c is equal to 23.75 can see how we got a key value pair we got a result in a key value pair what is the purpose of kw here this is the purpose its type is a dict so star args it type is a tuple and kw star star kw this type is this type is dict so see is there any more information which can explain yes so kw args for a variable number of keyword arguments so uh, kw args uh, we can say the kw args whatever you want to name it can name it except keyworded variable and argument passes by the function call so here is an example here in front of you some example is given you can see you can go through this function what the exact thing is happening you can see what the results we are getting very simple thing not a very big deal you can use both the things as per depend on your program okay so you can also test you can make your own function can go through it you can deal it with so basically in today's lecture what we have seen we have seen a simple function declaration function calling as well as we have seen the different operations on the function how we can do the deal with the functions arguments as well as you can call it as parameters then we have gone through two three examples then we have seen some different operations as well as errors we tackle in the functions then we have seen what is the use of args ARGS star ARGS we can pass as many arguments or a variable as we want to pass we have seen as well KW ARGS star star KW ARGS so yeah this was all about the today's video we have covered the lot many important concepts of the functions in Python okay so I will be meeting you in the next lecture with some new concepts in the Python so this was all about this lecture so till that time keep learning and happy coding okay bye bye enjoying if i hope you have enjoyed the session if you like the session please don't forget to like share as well as subscribe okay so keep coding happy learning bye bye